Welcome to the IROC RDS20 setup video. This instructional video is to assist the customer with the IROC RDS20 setup. The customer agrees to defend, protect, indemnify, and hold harmless IROC crushers and each of its officers, directors, employees, and agents from and against all claims, causes of action or otherwise, including without limitation, any costs, damages, and attorney fees resulting from any claims by any customer or any third parties for loss, damage, or personal injury, including death, allegedly caused by any use of this instructional video. Step number one, move Hydraset Hopper into position. Step number two, unload hopper from the trailer. Start the pony motor located under the hopper to engage the hydraulic legs. Next, remove the positioning pins from the hydraulic legs. Each leg is individually raised and lowered using the levers below the pony motor. Once the legs are stabilized and the hopper is standing on its own, pull the trailer out from under the hopper. Now it's time to line up the crusher with the hopper. Our next step is to attach the exhaust to the Caterpillar engine. In order to move on, it is important to check all fluid levels. The fluids you need to check are the engine oil, coolant level, and the hydraulic fluid. It is now time to turn on the master switch and start the Caterpillar engine. To start the Caterpillar engine, turn on the master switch which is located on the opposite side of the Caterpillar instrument panel. Next, raise the crusher lid three to four inches before positioning crusher onto the hopper. Now, raise the hopper in order to allow the crusher to back in underneath. In order to back the crusher underneath the hopper, pull the leveling valve to discharge the air from the airbags. This allows the crusher to clear the hopper when backing in. Line up the hopper with the main frame. Use the locator pins to lower the hopper into position. Then secure the hopper to the crusher frame with the supplied bolts. Lower the crusher lid using the levers next to the Caterpillar instrument panel. Remove the tractor from the crusher. Start by lowering the front hydraulic legs. Next, disconnect the air supply and electric pigtail and pull the tractor from under the crusher. Use a crane truck to raise the return chute into working position and secure the hopper to the crusher with the supplied hardware.
lower the axis ladders and bolt them into position. Roll down the front support legs and bolt them into position. Raise the main conveyor into working position. Remove the three shipping brackets to allow free movement of the main conveyor. Raise the spreader plate to the top of the main conveyor for installation. Bolt the hanger arms onto the main conveyor frame. Then secure the spreader plate. It is now time to install the crusher magnet. Begin by raising the magnet support legs into position and bolt them to the frame. Now we will assemble the discharge chute. Start by attaching the mounting bracket. Attach kicker braces to the magnet support legs. The brace is attached to the support legs using the kicker brace brackets. Raise the discharge chute and bolt into place. The magnet can now be brought up and placed on the support legs. Finally, bolt the caps on to secure the magnet. Remember to plug in the magnet and the feeder. Install all safety guards. Begin by attaching the return conveyor tail guard. Next, install the main conveyor tail guard located under the crusher. Install both the main conveyor side guards. Remove all red screen and feeder transport brackets. There are four on the screen and four on the feeder.
Remove the electrical control panel. Begin by removing the transport bolts located at the back of the control panel. Next, unhook the control panel from the machine and set it on the ground. Remember, all machines must be grounded before operating. Connect the water hoses to the spray bars. There are two spray bars, one located on the hopper feeder and the other is located at the crusher discharge. Next, raise the machine into working position. Use hardwood cribbing if needed. Make sure that all wheels are off the ground. Once positioned, pin the hydraulic legs. Let's start up the machine. Turn on the Caterpillar engine and settle between 950 and 1000 RPM. Next, engage the clutch button and hold for 3 seconds. Then, rev the engine to 2000 RPM. At the electric control panel, turn on the main breakers. Push the start system button. Wait for the alarm to stop sounding before proceeding. Commence startup sequence. The feeder speed can be controlled by the black dial next to the feeder start button. If you prefer to operate via the remote control, flip the switch from local to remote. In the event of an emergency, the emergency stop button will instantly stop all electrical components. To adjust the tension on the belts, turn the tensioners at the tail section of each conveyor. Check that all conveyor belts are aligned properly. Belt alignment can be done by loosening the bolts on the rollers and return idlers and moving them uphill 